This is the Proton Guru video practice for topics 2.12 and 13. These problems will give you practice on identifying oxidation reduction reactions as defined in organic chemistry, as well as on identifying the products of oxidation of alcohols under different conditions. Some brief and straightforward reading to get you ready for these kinds of problems can be found in the Organic Chemistry 1 Primer 2018. And you can also find additional chemistry videos and information on how to match up those videos to your course's textbook to help you in your course at ProtonGuru.com. Our first question is kind of like something you might see on a standardized test or an exam in your class. This has a word problem and a relatively complicated structure. But it's really asking us for some pretty simple information if we can sort through the complicated structure and wording. So this question tells us that liver enzymes can convert a ketone functional group of drugs like this one, this complicated structure, to an alcohol functional group. It's asking us to draw the product of that reaction. It just told us what the reaction was. Then it wants us to identify whether this is an oxidation or a reduction reaction. And then, finally, will the product be more or less soluble in water than the reactant? Well, it tells us that we're doing a reaction of a ketone functional group and converting it to an alcohol. So we first start off by finding the ketone functional group in the starting material. And we redraw this whole big complicated structure. And the only thing we change in reproducing that structure is the ketone functional group that used to be here to now the new alcohol functional group. The second part of the question asks us whether this is an oxidation or reduction reaction. Well, in organic chemistry, an oxidation is a reaction that increases the number of carbon-oxygen bonds or that decreases the number of carbon-hydrogen bonds. A reduction, on the other hand, is a reaction that will lead to fewer bonds between carbon and oxygen, which is what we see here, going from double to single, or a reaction in which you add hydrogens to the carbon. So we have more carbon-hydrogen bonds here. For those reasons, this is a reduction reaction. Now the last part of this question asks us, will the product be more or less soluble in water than was the reactant? Remember from introductory material in organic chemistry that the solubility has to do with what intermolecular forces are present in the molecule. Well, the only thing that's changed in this molecule is the ketone became a alcohol functional group. A ketone is a polar bond between carbon and oxygen, so it is capable of dipole-dipole interactions. The new functional group with the OH unit is capable of hydrogen bonding. Hydrogen bonding will lead to stronger intermolecular forces with water, which will make it more soluble in water than was the starting material. The next question simply asks us to rank these molecules containing carbon atoms from the highest to the lowest oxidation state. Well, how do you figure out just how high the oxidation state is? It's relatively straightforward. More carbon-oxygen bonds or fewer carbon-hydrogen bonds leads to a higher oxidation state. And in some contexts, you could count the number of carbon to other electronegative atoms other than oxygen. But in this case, we only have oxygens in our structures. So we're really just counting how many carbon-oxygen bonds we have. And that's pretty straightforward. We have one carbon-oxygen bond there, two here, one, two, three carbon-oxygen bonds there, no carbon-oxygen bonds in that structure. And now it's just a simple matter of ranking those. The highest oxidation state, carbon, is the one that has three bonds to oxygen. Second highest has only two, third highest has only one. The lowest oxidation state features no carbon-oxygen bonds. Another common type of question you'll see is a question that asks you to identify whether each reaction is an oxidation, a reduction, or neither. Again, we'll use our knowledge that more carbon-oxygen bonds or fewer carbon-hydrogen bonds equals a higher oxidation state. So now we just analyze for each of these reactions what changes in carbon-oxygen bond count or carbon-hydrogen bond count are taking place. On going from starting material to product, we lose this carbon-oxygen bond. And in place of that oxygen, if you draw out the hydrogens, you can see that you actually gain a carbon-hydrogen bond. In this case, we don't have any oxygens to start or in the product. But if you draw out the hydrogen, you'll see that you actually gain two carbon-hydrogen bonds. Each carbon started with one hydrogen, and now each carbon has two hydrogens. In this next example, you gain an additional carbon-oxygen bond. You start with one, you end with two and you lose a carbon-hydrogen bond. This hydrogen that's not drawn is no longer there in the product. And let's look at this last one. Clearly, we lose the carbon-oxygen bond. That carbon doesn't have the oxygen on it anymore. But you also lose a carbon-to-hydrogen bond because in the product, you only have one hydrogen on that carbon. And here you have two. So now, using our simple definition of oxidation and reduction in organic chemistry, we see that we do a reduction here, losing carbon-oxygen bonds, gaining carbon-hydrogen bond. We have a reduction here where we gain hydrogens. 
We have an oxidation here where we increase the number of bonds to oxygen, losing a hydrogen in the process. And finally, in this last case, we lose a carbon oxygen bond, which would be a reduction, but we also lose a carbon hydrogen bond, which would be an oxidation. So overall, we have neither a reduction nor an oxidation reaction. The other type of problem that we want to cover in these topics are to provide products of oxidation reactions. Now, there are a lot of different oxidizing reagents that you might see in reactions with alcohols. And one very important point is to be able to figure out how strong the oxidizing reagents are. Now, you really want to commit this type of information to memory. Your, your class might not cover all of these oxidizing reagents, so just list the ones that you do cover in your course. But PCC, PDC, and the Swern oxidation, which involves the use of trifluoroacetic acid and DMSO, abbreviated here, those all are only capable of increasing the oxidation state by a unit of one. It will create one new carbon-oxygen bond. The other chromium reagents will increase the oxidation state by as much as possible. It does this by replacing all of the carbon-hydrogen bonds with carbon-oxygen bonds. We're talking about the carbon that has the OH on it. And I hope that these examples will illustrate those ideas here. So armed with our knowledge now of the different strengths of these oxidizing agents, whether it's only capable of one unit or as many as hydrogen bonds are present, we can look at these questions. So the first one has PCC. Now you look at this carbon, it's only the carbon with the OH on it that's going to be reacting and changing its oxidation state with these oxidizing agents. Only the carbon with the OH on it to start. Well, PCC is in our list of reagents that can only increase the oxidation state by one. So we're going to take off one of the two H's on that carbon and replace it with a new bond to an O. So instead of one bond to O, we have two. That's an increase in oxidation state by a unit of one. If we take the same starting material that we use with PCC above and instead do the Jones oxidation, which might be drawn out as chromium trioxide with sulfuric acid, as I show here, the Jones oxidation is a different chromium reagent. It increases the oxidation state by as much as possible. So we have to see how many H's are on the alcohol carbon. That's two. We increase by as much as possible. We need to make two new bonds to oxygen. Well, the oxygen that was already there can only accommodate one more bond because you don't want to have more than an octet of electrons around the O. The oxidizing reagent provides another OH. Remember that part of the Jones oxidation is CrO3, so it has oxygens it can donate. So now you have, instead of one bond to oxygen in the starting material, you've taken the two H's off, so you have two new bonds to the oxygens. That's a total of one, two, three. If we look at this next example, it's very similar to the first, but there happens to already be a double bond O here. Well, that can't undergo any more oxidation. There are no other hydrogens on that carbon, so we don't even have to worry about that. That's going to stay the same. The unit that still has hydrogens to be oxidized on the carbon that already has an oxygen there is the one on the right. The Jones oxidation replaces both of those CH bonds with new bonds to oxygen. Let's continue by looking at these examples. Well, again, we need to keep in mind which of our oxidizing reagents are capable of increasing the oxidation state by only one, and which are capable of providing increase in oxidation state by as much as possible are replacing the CH bonds with CO bonds. Our first example is the Swern oxidation. It's done at a low temperature with trifluoroacetic acid and DMSO. Since that can only increase the oxidation state by one, we only make one new CO bond by taking one of these carbon-hydrogen bonds away. We didn't do any reactions at this chiral center, so it's going to maintain its configuration. Next, we see this alcohol. It's got a hydrogen that's not drawn, and with this reaction, we see a different chromium reagent that's not listed in our one oxidation state increase of reagents. So we make a new bond from carbon to oxygen. Notice that we start off with the chiral center there, but we've gone to an sp2 hybridized carbon. That's planar. You would never want to draw a hashed or wedge-shaped line going to a double bonded species like that. Our last reaction has one of these strong oxidizing agents as well, one of these other chromium reagents that can increase the oxidation state by as much as possible. Well, we look at this carbon, we say, well, how much can I increase it? Well, there aren't any hydrogens there. We've got a methyl group, a methyl group, and this other alkyl group. We have as much as possible now being zero. We can't increase the oxidation state at all. So there's actually no oxidation reaction between these two species. Now, as with a lot of the other recent Proton Guru video practices, we want to start incorporating some of these new reactions we just learned into reaction strings, like this three-step reaction we see here. And when you see a question like this, it helps to try to figure out in the beginning what kind of reaction each step could be. Well, some of the reagents are pretty unique. You can figure out that 
I only learned PDC, for example, in the context of increasing oxidation state of an alcohol by one product here that you start with should be an alcohol then if it's going to react with PDC, giving you some information. The next piece of information we see is we have this tosyl chloride. Well, the only thing we use tosyl chloride for in our class so far is making the OH into a good leaving group, which is a tosylate. So if we fill those in pieces of information in, it will help us begin to fill in the products now. Well, the first step is an SN2 reaction because we have a primary species with a good leaving group and a good nucleophile. We can do a reaction like this. Now we don't mess with the configuration of this center. It didn't have a good leaving group. We don't have anything to activate the OH to be a good leaving group, so that site stays the same. All we've changed is the substitution of the chlorine for the OH nucleophile. Now the PDC increases the oxidation state of alcohol carbon by one by taking some of the hydrogens away. So what product will we get in this box? Well, let's look at this. We have two alcohols in this starting material. There are no H's to be replaced here with bonds to oxygen. We have a carbon and a carbon and a carbon attached to this potential site of oxidation. So we can't oxidize that carbon at all. This carbon does have two H's, and again, we're only going to increase the oxidation state by one. So in assessing that and figuring out what our product should be, we should say, okay, we're going to make one new bond between carbon and oxygen there, and this site here is going to stay the same as it was in the starting material. Next, we have this tosyl chloride. It makes an OH into a good leaving group, which is a tosylate. Well, we only have one OH left, so the product is going to be a tosyl there. Another important point, this is a stereocenter. It still maintains its configuration throughout the reaction like it had at the start, because we never change what's bonded to this carbon.